smelled All right, I am going to try to give everybody a full homestead update. That's going to include garden, goats, poultry, the whole nine yards. So come along and see what's happening here at Wholesome Roots. One of the big projects we've been working on um, is getting cuttings and seeds started for our food forest. So I hope you check out that video that we just posted about ways in which you can get cuttings and seeds for your food forest. All right, and then the other big project we just completed was I got some helpers in the garden and we dug out the path so that the water could drain. If you can see, it has not rained in over 24 hours and we still have water flowing. It's actually flowing through and draining off still from the beds. Just water coming out of the ground that was completely saturated and making its way down the main trench in the back. Look at it, it's just flowing from, from that other bit, that other path as well. We've got it going all the way out and down into the pond. So one of the things I did was I tried to branch at the end so that the water wouldn't be getting into the pond unfiltered. So I'm using the plant material located here and creating Ys and all different pathways so that the water will disperse as it gets closer. We got our rescue onions planted. Don't even know what they are, but they've got bulbs started, so that'll be interesting. I uh, got water flowing heavily out of this path, just a little bit out of this one. Looks like it slowed down some and it's draining out. Everything is going to be feeling a lot better, especially with these beds that we have stuff planted in. To get the moisture off of the root zone is going to allow these plants to thrive much better. The beaver has not attempted to come back, it appears. I see no tracks in the mud from him, no new digging, so I think he probably just got stuck inside this fence and didn't know how to get out, and that's why he did that. I don't think it was necessarily he was trying to get in, I think he was trying to get out. Our fencing has failed anyway on this end, and it's beginning to fail in other spots along there. These bamboo posts are not cut out for holding up the fence, they're just snapping off at the base, so even though I've stuck them back up, tried to stick it back in, it's just pulling down, so I need to get something different. I was trying to go with something that wasn't as expensive as T-Post, but I might end up having to get the T-Post anyway. That's just a lot of T-Post. But it might be the best thing. I do want these fences to be sturdy. The back fence is a wire fence, so that one's very sturdy with the T-Post. We'll be able to grow heavy things along that fence without any issues. I wanted to be able to grow things along this light fence that was light, like peas that don't really weigh a lot, they just need a little bit of help climbing, but I don't think we're going to be able to do that in this current state. We still need to get in here and blowtorch these weeds, but there is one reason why I'm glad we didn't do that yet. And there is only one good use for Creeping Charlie. And it is my little friend right here. I hope you can see him. The honeybee. The honeybees were all over this yesterday. Like I couldn't even come close to this area. It was just buzzing with bees all over these flowers. So it's a good thing that we didn't have time to, or the ability to, because it was too wet, come in and burn this Creeping Charlie out because the honeybees are really needing food. 
it's been unseasonably wet, but it's also been unseasonably warm this winter in Georgia. Uh, the bees are out when they normally wouldn't be, but there's nothing for them to nectar on. So the Creeping Charlie has actually provided a good amount of food for these honeybees. And I can't help but wonder if these are my bees that swarmed and left the hive and that I'm actually feeding my own honeybees that I once had. And speaking of honeybees, I was contacted by my bee guy and he said that the hives are ready. He'll be coming back from vacation soon. Um, and I think we'll be getting them in the next week or two. So I'm super excited to set up our beehives again. And I just cannot wait. It's going to be so wonderful and exciting to see those bees thriving and doing well and pollinating our garden. Not to mention yummy honey. <sighs> I'm going to try my best not to harvest any honey this year unless they do incredibly good and then I might just harvest one frame. But the first year I like to say that we're going to leave all the honey for them for the winter so that they can be an even stronger colony in the spring so that next year we can harvest all of the honey that we need to. These seedlings are doing amazing. I am running out of room to keep them on a heating mat and under a light at the same time. Granted, these, this first tray with most of the berries and um, peppers don't need the light yet because they haven't germinated. But as you can see, a lot of the broccoli and cabbage are starting to germinate. And you see them reaching, trying to go towards the light. So I keep shifting them from one end to the other and pulling the tray this way and then I do that again in the afternoon so that they can get equal amount of light. Now this seed heating mat is the reason why these peppers are under the light not because they need the oh wait a minute <gasps> y'all do you see what I see I was just gonna say they don't need the light yet but that is the shoulder of a seedling emerging. Oh, I think these are fruit, actually. These are, these are my purple tomatillas. How exciting. I ran into a problem where I didn't have enough seed heating mats to start my tomatoes. And then I remembered that I have these commercial greenhouse mats from my commercial greenhouse days they're really long so I had custom built tables for them in my greenhouse um but I don't have them in here so I set up these two tables side by side and it allows me to do one two three four trays of tomatoes so I haven't done them yet I should have already but I was busy getting all these other seeds started You, some of your plants are growing. Here, let me show you. So this light started flickering yesterday and now it's out. And that's not good because I actually needed the light on these plants. These are the plants that have already germinated. Look, Liam, they are growing. Oh. So he's got some oregano, basil, um, some scallions, some parsley, and it looks like tomatoes. We lost a label here, it seems, somehow. Good job, Liam. I'm going to put them over here so that they can get the sun. All right, so I moved the egg carton seedlings over here so that they can have the light. These ones are on a heat mat to germinate, not germinating yet. we got a tiny bit of germination right there, but not enough to worry about too much yet. These are on a heat mat to germinate. Um, we've got a variety of things in here, eggplant, artichoke, onion, celery, ashwagandha. We've also got on this back row here, our older seedlings that absolutely do need the light. I was just saying that we need to start transitioning these. These are our cold weather spring vegetables. So we're going to go ahead and start putting them outside for a couple of hours a day and 
good weather, you can do that. If the weather is severe, you don't want to do that. If it's too hot, you don't want to do that. And if it's too cold, you don't want to do that. But every day we're going to put them out for a couple more hours. We'll do it. We'll increase the time as time goes on so that these guys will be ready to plant right out into the garden anytime now. This row was a restarted row and that's some bok choy just starting to germinate. I see some seeds right on top that are germinating. Hopefully I didn't do it too shallow. So yep, these are going to be our first round of cool weather plantings. <laughs> ha! Cool weather. What's that? We really don't have a lot of that here in Georgia this winter. It's led to a few complications in my life and it may or may not have affected some of you. So some of you had sent me emails about getting elderberry cuttings at the beginning of the winter. And I've been updating you guys in the videos, but I guess not everybody watches all of the videos and may have missed some of those updates. So I hope that anybody who sent that email is watching this update video to know that this has not been a normal winter. I've been waiting till the plants are ready for cuttings and it never happened. That is not something I can control. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing spring cuttings, obviously. So instead of winter cuttings, we're doing spring cuttings. They both do wonderfully well and will do great for you in your situation if you're still interested. If you're not, that's okay too. So when the time comes that my abilities are at the point where I can take all these cuttings, get them all packaged up and send them all out, I will send out an email. I have not been as healthy as I would like to be. So those timings of things like that get pushed around sometimes. So because of my health fluctuations, the timing of things don't always work out in my favor. So I'm doing my best and that's all I can do. So it's either okay with you or it's not, and I'm okay with it if it's not okay with you. That's fine, I'm, no feelings hurt. Um, I just am letting you know I'm being upfront and honest with you. Oh my goodness, my beautiful guard dogs overlooking their flock. They should be extremely commended for the job that they've done. The other night at midnight, I heard a ruckus out here. The dogs were barking their real bark. And I came running with a flashlight. And I saw, I came running on this side of the house, got to about here, and I saw running that way a huge fox. And I still heard noises coming from over here. So I ran back to the door and I screamed into the front door, Ryan, get your gun. And I ran back out thinking that it could have been a coyote because it was such a big looking fox. And I thought there could be more because I was still hearing sounds over here of distress. So I came over here as fast as I could and I found a chicken that was out, but it wasn't injured, luckily. So I got it back in. And the next morning, I found another chicken out. <laughs> and Ryan found it that it was the one laying this beautiful blue egg. So we put her back in as well. So you guys can probably already see what happened here. These openings are big enough for a predator and they're big enough for a chicken. This is a bad mistake in our design that we just ran out of fencing here and here. We should have done another fencing across here of the chicken wire. So we do the welded wire or woven wire with chicken wire on top as a double barrier against predators. So now it's gonna be a repair across here and we'll be much better off. What I'm thinking happened is the fox was probably digging at the back door trying to get in and the chickens got spooked and came flying up out of this hole. So in a way it gave them a passage out but it's still not a good idea to have that opening for your animals because it's also a way for a raccoon to get in. 
the ducks are doing well. They're handling this situation. Okay. I'd like to let them free range again, but I'm gonna wait until the winter predator issue is diminished. So I think one of the things that was actually preventing predators from coming in to our poultry area was not just the dogs barking, but I think Tom the turkey was actually protecting them. Tom the turkey is no longer with us. Well, he is with us, but in a very different way. We processed him and had a Thanksgiving dinner and it was wonderful. The breast meat was super juicy and tender and we ate a ton of it and we never eat breast meat. We're, we're dark meat people. We like dark meat way more than we like light meat. And so what was interesting is that the breast meat was amazing, but the legs and the dark meat were very, very tough still even after roasting it all day so I put it into a pot of water and boiled it down and it's falling off the bone and we're gonna make a delicious turkey soup with the rest of it very excited that he could feed our family we've already had two meals off of him we had a dinner one night a, a full Thanksgiving dinner and then we had lunch with turkey sandwiches the next day and there was still enough to make another batch of turkey sandwiches but I was like oh, I just had turkey sandwich so let's just put it all into the soup so the soup is probably going to be one that we eat off of for a day or maybe even lunch the next day and then freeze what's left because it's going to be too much soup for us to eat in the in the amount of time that it needs to be eaten in so what an amazing abundant blessing he gave our family the boys were actually very relieved um they said they were glad because they would, didn't want to be hurt by the turkey so they understood our reasoning and they supported it and so that made me feel good as a mom and as a farmer <laughs> I'm so excited this year for the garden, mainly because of all the new seeds I have to try. So I have to give a few shout outs here for the seeds. First off, Baker Creek. Huge selection of seeds, really, really good quality, excellent customer service. And I just wanna say a big thank you for those of you that sent me gift certificates and sent me seeds so that I would have all of the different colors of the rainbow in my garden this year. I truly appreciate it. I also received a gift of some MI Gardener seeds that I am so excited about trying. I've got a lot of them sown already, so we're gonna see how these plants grow and succeed. Also, another really big, huge shout out to Mary's Heirloom Seeds. She is a wonderful person. I've been friends with her on Facebook for a little while now, and she was kind enough to send me some seeds to try out so that I can see what wonderful seeds she has for you guys to try out. I'm gonna leave links to all three of those seed companies down below. I also received a lot of other, um, cuttings and seeds and sweet potatoes and potatoes and ginger from other very generous subscribers that are helping us get started by shopping off of our wish list. Our Amazon wish list is where I put all of the things that I really want to get but I'm not able to at this point in time. So if you are interested in supporting us in that way, you can check out our Amazon wish list. I'll leave a link down below. So if you're looking for other ways to support us and our family, shopping using our Amazon link will really help support us. We get a small percentage of the sale and it doesn't change the price to you guys at all. Also, shopping off our Amazon storefront works the same as the Amazon link and we do get a percentage of that as well. Buying things for us off of the wish list is completely optional. It's very much appreciated and it always makes us very happy when we have a new package arrive and it excites us. So thank you for all of you that have been using those features. And for those of you that have not, please consider it. Also, if you are interested in doTERRA oils, I have a link down below to my personal doTERRA. I've been selling doTERRA for like five years now, I think. So I've been at this for a long time. I just have not been aggressive about my sales approach. I'm not a huge aggressive salesperson. I'm kind of like, 
if you want to buy oils off of me, you can order them on my website. <laughs> so if you're not already working with a doTERRA sales rep, please consider using our doTERRA link when you purchase your oils, whether it's for yourself, your goats and livestock or your gardens. And I will be doing more videos on using the oils in those situations in the future. So speaking of you guys being so supportive and Baker Creek being so awesome, we have received the Homestead Seed Package from Baker Creek as a donation for sponsoring our 10,000 subscriber giveaway. We could not be happier. We are so excited. We have many prizes that we've been adding to the Homestead giveaway that's going to happen when we hit 10,000 subscribers and we're getting really close guys. So if you haven't shared our videos yet, if you haven't told people about Wholesome Roots, please help us get to 10,000. However you can help us, whether it's by watching videos and liking the videos, commenting on them, which gets them shown to more people, or by sharing them with your friends. We have prizes that are going to be ranging from anything from goats to garden to chickens and everything in between pretty much. So we have a variety of prizes. I will do a separate video that's going to be all about the giveaway and what you need to do to enter and we're going to list all of the prizes that we currently have. We are in the works of possibly getting even more prizes to add to it, but already it's a, looking like an amazing prize package. And I don't want to give just one winner all of the stuff. I want every prize to go to a different winner. So there's going to be a lot of chances to win these things. So make sure you watch out for future videos about our giveaway for 10,000 subscribers. So the quail have begun molting, which I didn't know that they would do. They don't, they don't look as bad as the chickens do, that's for sure. When the chickens molt, they look so yucky. The quail look cute still. Um, so we haven't been getting any eggs out of this batch for this week because they're molting. But the other ones are still laying a few eggs still so we have plenty of eggs the ducks and the chickens are laying eggs as well they're just not laying them in the nest box so they're pretty dirty the duck eggs are the main dirty ones but even the chickens have been laying on the ground instead of the nest box you can definitely tell the difference between the beautiful clean eggs in the nest box and those that are not we are discussing having just these egg layers stay and sell the rest off. We only need two chicken tractors is what we finally realized. We don't need all these chickens because it's just extra work to try to sell the eggs when people aren't really reliable about coming out and buying them anyway. So it's probably easier for us to just get rid of the extra chickens and just provide enough eggs for our family. We've had the goats doing some garden work for us we put these bamboo poles in here for them to strip the leaves off of to make it easier for us to trim off those little branches. And I will be doing a video on what we're going to do with these bamboo very soon. I'm extremely excited about it. <laughs> Autumn is doing well out here in the barn, getting some socializing in with the goats getting all this wonderful fresh air she seems to be doing really well with the transition so i'm super happy about that and i hope that we can continue with her physical therapy and continue to see some improvements with her we are expecting kitty to go into labor at any point we're kind of like on utter watch she's not due right now but she thinks she's due. She feels like she's due. Let's just say that. Hi, Hi goats. Goats are doing great. We're feeding mostly Bermuda now because of the price of alfalfa 
just being too ridiculous for us at this time. You can see they waste a lot more Bermuda than they do alfalfa. Where's Hart? She's up there. She's right up there on the other side of Precious. So everybody's doing well. See, Hart's is right there. Right there. <laughs> Silly boy. This one though. Kitty has been really, really, really going slow, getting out of the barn, pretty much slow with everything, and uh, just showing her late stage pregnancy. She's due March 7th. She's due March 7th, so she is uh, got a got a little bit more time left still, but she is definitely filling out. She's very fat. Her udder is nice and large. We are looking forward. I hope she has twins again. We are pretty confident that Fancy Girl and Daisy are both bred. All three of these are Fluff and Nutter babies. Hello, Dom. Sweet girl. Um, Fancy 2 is also bred probably for middle of June. So we've got March, May 1st on these two. Unless Fancy is not due May 1st, then she's due April 3rd, I think. And then she's, not April 3rd, um, June 3rd. And then she's due June 19th. So we're getting closer and closer to having lots of milk and babies. Um, we're looking at the possibility of finding a new home for Rosemary because I don't appreciate being tricked. <laughs> um, Dottie is a possibility of going with Eugene. Fern is one that I'm looking at possibly rehoming as well. Um, and it was somebody else. Who was the other one? Oh, the other Shady's twin. So Shady's one little girl here, Blossom, has been super sweet and loving with us. And Flower has not been at all. She won't even let us approach her. So this is some of the reasons, you know, Fern is too little. <sighs> Flower is not friendly enough. Um, Dottie, I'm only considering sending her off because my friend really deserves a good milker and she's gonna be a good milker if she's anything like her mom. Rosemary, I just don't know what her deal is with the breeding and then acting like she's bred and then not having a kid and still being fat. So I don't know. She would just be sold as a brush goat at this point because I can't confirm whether or not she is able to be bred. She's got some of that lovely cashmere that she's shedding out right now, too. That's fun. So, yeah, when goats shed out their winter coat, it's a cashmere. Beautiful. Y'all are cute. <laughs> the little boy's got to get banded, and the little girl is about as precious as they come. The boy's a scaredy cat, and the girl's a lover. You are a lover. You are. Oh, you're a lover too, Shy. Oh, yes. I would love to go ahead and breed Shy if I see any signs of heat, but I don't want any babies being born in July or September because I have plans both those months that I don't want to be interfered with a doe in labor. She's so funny. She's actually usually more friendly than that and wants to be petted. She's just playing hard to get. Maybe the, the doe, baby doe wants to play hide and seek. Maybe she wants to play hide and seek, yeah. I also wanted to talk about something else. We have some friends, Jim and Renda, at Hardiness Approach. They've been hit with a huge blow and they need our support now more than ever. So I'm gonna leave a link down below to the video touching on what's going on with them and their GoFundMe 
that has been set up by some fellow community supporters. There's also going to be a t-shirt for sale that will have proceeds going to them as well. So I'm going to leave the links to those things down below in the videos that correspond with them. And I just hope that you guys can help show your support with our beautiful dear friends, Jim and Renda. We love you guys. See the bucks are down there pigging out on hay. They're all pretty happy about that. And we are excited for a new season with our gardens, our poultry, and our goats. I hope that you guys have enjoyed this little update video and I'm looking forward to hearing from you guys in the comments down below. Hopefully they're all working. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, share, comment down below, subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you next time on Wholesome Roots. See you next time on Wholesome Roots and I hope you subscribe to our video and see you next time. Yay!